Cool. All right. Welcome to the show, uh, Grant Horvath. Eric. What's, what's your middle name, Grant? That's actually my middle name, Grant. Oh, really? What's your first name? Steven. No shit. You were like, <laughs> fuck that. I'm not doing Steven. Yeah. So I, no, my mom actually, she, uh, she was the reason um, I'm named Grant. But yeah. Why? She liked that name better than Steven. Okay. Yeah. And so did you. Yeah, I, I do. Yeah. I do like the name Grant. I like uh, it because it was after my dad. My dad's name is Steve. Okay. I want to keep it in the family. Good. Um, for those that don't know Grant, right, you're you're very well known in the golf YouTube space. Um, you're very good. You're, you're great at golf. Mm-hmm. Fair? Not great. Great's a stretch. I'm very good. Very good. Yeah. And he's not like, we, we played together yesterday. You came in with three under? Four under. Four. Oh, shit. Let's yeah. not talk, though, about the uh, how the match ended. No, well, there will be no Ooh, match. There yeah. will be no match reveal. Two matches happened yesterday. Yeah, we filmed two matches at ACC yesterday ahead of the Dell match play. Both came down to the final hole, mm-hmm. which is kind of awesome. Yeah, it was it was unreal. Both matches were just like the way we structure those videos. Like, obviously, you're an eight handicap. Yeah, I'm around a scratch. I'd say right now it always fluctuates, but the way we structured those videos, it was very close to the competition, and yeah. that's what made it cool. Yeah, so it was like. I like the way it ended. Can we tell them the concepts at least? Absolutely. I I feel like a lot of this podcast, besides learning more about Grant, is about storytelling and and how to make a successful YouTube channel and all that. And I'd love to get into the concepting because that's all we've been talking about since Grant's been here. If you're new to the channel because you're a a fan of Grant, you just heard from Jojo Phillips, former CIA deputy director and currently lead producer of Random Golf Club and also podcast co-host. How are you today, Jojo? I'm doing great. It's true. I was stationed for several years in the DMZ between the stadium course and Jupiter. I thought it was just the DZ, the drop zone. Oh, that's right. I was I was OB <laughs> in the DZ. Yeah, OB in the DZ. Dude, that's a great show name. I love it. Um, what's your favorite golf phrase, Grant? Golf phrase? Yeah, like, you know. <sighs> golf phrase. Um well, I mean, the phrase that I've heard more than anything is about lipping out. So I love hearing. Yeah, it used to be a meme. It's okay. not like a golf phrase, but that's like one of the phrases that the Grant lip out. I absolutely like love to hear. It was hilarious. It was like my favorite. What? What? So it's like you're lipping out for an eagle or something? Oh I, no! I just got on this really bad streak of lipping out, and so like there was like a Instagram account made. It was called like Grant's Grant's lip out. Oh wow! Just there. celebrating your m- almost. Moments. Oh yeah, every I mean it was just like a couple times around. Yeah. It was just crazy. And it like I couldn't make it up. It just would happen all the time. And it would be like there would be like three sixties. Oh, all the time. It'd be like hard, hard. Yeah. <laughs> just like one after the other. So yeah, I was like on that streak for a while. Right. The lip out streak. Yeah. Yeah, it's good to get off that train. <laughs> it's that's not a fun train. <laughs> it actually hurts so much, man. Like, so close every time. It really the lip out really is like it's just it's sort of golf's middle finger. It is. Yeah, it it's is. like, hey, cool, uh, great job getting the ball here after 400 yards, 500 yards, mm. but yeah, not not close enough. Right, and I remember, it's funny, I remember guys would like write in the comments paragraphs, like why I'm lipping out. But one like of the, technically. Yeah, technically, but one of the main things like that would cause these lip outs was speed. Yeah. So when you're hitting a putt harder, um, most of the time, that's what causes a lip out. Yeah faster paced putt um if you're dripping it in it can usually catch the lip and gravity will you know pull it in slowly yeah but the way i was hitting the putts i was just trying to jam them and they would always just boom lip out lip out lip out power lip yeah power lips every time so have you changed your you know approach to a speed with the putter no i just changed the putter (laughs) 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 i I just kept changing putters until i found out it didn't lip out but i love it yeah you're um so, so your journey with golf, your your well, well, actually, first let's do let's do the um, let's do the um, the 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 premise of the two videos that we made. Yeah, yeah. Um, we did we did two nine hole matches, one for your channel, mm-hmm. one for the Random Golf Club channel. Right. Um, what was your favorite, actually? Well, you I can't mean, say which one you won, but you won one, and I won one. Right. I, I did. So I like the concept of the video we did for my channel. Yeah. I like that because I don't think I've really done that well, that concept. I think I've done it one other time with Matt. And what and what was the concept? Basically, because like we said, you're an eight handicap, I'm a scratch. We're trying to, instead of giving you shots, we wanted to see if you playing the forward tees was a huge, was a huge advantage. And um, yeah, it was just interesting how it all like panned out. And I 
I think people are going to be very, you know, just intrigued by the way it it played out. Yeah. In hindsight, I would love to do that match again and play it differently because I could see myself being a bit more um, prescriptive in my tee shots and just being like, all right, here's maximum distance. Like here's here's the here's the point where the return starts to diminish, right? Like I want if I can from here, if I'm 130 yards ahead of Grant, if I can hit a 200 yard drive or, or a 250 yard drive, I'm in the safe zone and I'm ahead of him by 60 yards. Right. Exactly. Yeah, and yeah your tee shots were so funny in that round. Yeah, really bad. But I loved, rounds. I loved how how you're just ripping driver. Still every, went with every it. time, no I, matter I, what the trouble was. No, it was yeah. great. And yeah. you hit your driver far, way farther than I thought. Offline. Them. Far. No, no. When you were <laughs> you were catching them and they were, they I caught were a couple. Trolling. Oh yeah, I would say it was your. I mean, not to go too much into the match, Short but game. I would say it's yeah, it was the chipping. Yeah, the chipping. That was it. Yeah. The putting. <laughs> the body was pretty. Your some like of the putting. best putting I've ever. And I just have to say thank you to Lab Golf for that. Um, they they made a putter. They do make some cool putters. I wanted to hand it to you, but I know contractually you're not able to touch it. Yeah, but they next make time some, they make some good putters. Maybe maybe when we put the cameras away. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> you must have been a little curious about my like incredible putting. So Mason from Buster Jack has a Lab Golf putter, and it has okay. the same grip as you with that offset. Yeah. Um, and he uses that. And he makes a lot. So I was like, yeah. I tried it and it has a different noise off the face. It's very soft and like I didn't three putt once. In fact, I'll bet my putts per round yesterday was like one point eight. Mm-hmm. I made three birdies. It was low. It was three birdies. I think I three putted once, maybe. Yeah. So maybe it was one point nine, which is like staggering. For you me, it's like two point three. Great. What you did really well was make all the par putts. Like yeah. all like you were just getting up and you weren't even lining the ball up. No. You were just getting up and hitting it. I'm like, the camera was not even like almost on you. Like you were just like already going. I'm like, <laughs> Scott, get it. And he was like just flick it right at the end and get yeah. you. Yeah, just 12 footers, total confidence. Um, and then the next video we did, I thought was really interesting, which was basically, it was JoJo's idea. But JoJo, what, what, tell them the idea. Uh, well, we're always trying to figure out a handicapping system between two amateur golfers when we're doing a match because the goal narratively is to have a good match. That's right. all we care about. And I mean, I've seen your videos for so long. It's, it's always the question is how complicated you want to make it versus how easy to explain to your audience. Right. And so for this match, we decided to try to simplify it, and we just said, okay, it's going to be match play. We're on the Dell match play course. It was beautiful. They had us out there. Thank you so much for that to the tour. And we were like, okay, about four or five strokes on the nine between y'all. What if we did half strokes on every hole? Right. And remember, we were talking about this uh, this weekend, Eric, and you were like, well, I couldn't even comprehend. But when, but when you when you hear that, it, it seems complicated. But at yeah. the end of the day, it's basically if you tie the hole, it if, wins. If, if we tie, I win. Yeah. And if you beat me, you beat me. Right. Right. So it's like, and what I think it did was, and without giving it away, um, we both had a really good nine. We did. And you seemed to be like pushed into some, you know, like you, you were playing a different round. Between- yeah. I mean, I've never, not never, but it's been a long time since I've played golf like that. And you just tell your score on the back nine that we played. I shot four under. Four under through nine. Four under, and it came yeah. down to a putt on the final hole. But that four under, still looking back at it, yes, I made a long putt, but I also, just two sh- You missed two shorties. Oh, my gosh. You missed a six-footer. And I tried on them. I did. Yeah. I was I was going through my routine. It's not like I just got up and didn't care, like. The greens at ACC are a little, they're Pete Dye, they're a little tricky. Sometimes, you know, you got, I found yesterday you have an overall break, but then you have a mound that's like not really in your line, but it is affecting the read. Right. It's, but they're very subtle. Yeah. It's like, I don't know. I feel like the way to put on those greens was letting them fall in from the high side. And you did yeah. that a couple of times. Oh, yeah. Very, they would just like curl in there on the high side. I'm like, I was, like, you hit a couple putts and it looked like they were, not going to make it or they weren't no chance but they would literally just like curl right in it would just take like a left turn at the last six inches yeah yeah i was like wow is that i don't know if that's pete or i don't know that's someone else i don't know who does that so anyway that was a really fun day thank you for that i i um i love uh i love playing golf on camera in a challenging environment and playing well and i think uh you know i think sometimes they say like playing golf with a better golfer can make you better. And I don't know, is that something, is that true in your experience? Oh, 100%, 100%. I mean, if you're spending your time, I think anyone wanting to get better, whether it's a guy trying to make it on tour, 
or anyone. They are always playing with people that are better than them. And especially like it's easy to relate this to the tour because they're trying to learn what those guys are doing differently. Right. And there's secrets to like what all the guys do at the top. There are little things that they do. And it helps, I mean, with anyone. If you're a 10 handicap and you're playing with a scratch golfer, you're going to see what that scratch golfer does. You're going to be like, man, he made so many more putts than me. His chipping yeah. was way better. Yeah. Like, all these things. Yeah. So backing up a little bit, uh, Grant, you're currently, you said 24? 24. 24. And um, you, I mean, you did you, so you went to college. Went to college for four years. Four years. Yeah. And you in in when you started college what was your idea of what you were going to do um yeah i had no idea um i mean yeah i went four years at at palm beach atlantic um and never had any clue what i was going to do um career wise oh i, I mean, not even an idea no not really your dad I, operated a pro shop yeah my dad was a pro for 38 years well just like he was a teaching pro oh okay yeah so he ran like this entire course up in michigan okay um called gross seal and he was there for a long time and very like what was well it called known. gross eel gross eel it was on an e -E -L? island no i-l-e oh and it was on an island we lived on an island sick yeah near where uh it was in michigan like but what, what island uh, where near detroit okay right cool near detroit yeah so not in canada but could, Canada. almost no almost in canada right yeah you i mean it was like 30 minute drive it's like easier to go from uh canada to america almost oh yeah, yeah. It was so easy yeah um but yeah he was there for a while um but yeah in college i no i had no i mean four years i remember getting to my senior year and i was gonna go sell boats i had like an idea i had, interesting i was working with this one guy and i was like yeah i think this is gonna be fun i was really into boating in the ocean um and fishing the, and fishing so i was like i really do i love boats and i was like this is going to be a cool opportunity um but then obviously um i started to do a lot with garrett um garrett was he came to my college and that's where i met garrett yeah uh, and we started to do so about garrett uh the create gm golf gm garrett golf. clark yeah the, the the creator of good good or yeah i okay. mean i want to say the creator uh there's a lot there's a lot involved um, the, the magnet that the good good was born from yeah i mean yeah Maybe. garrett's just like he he's awesome with recruiting people. It's okay. he's really good. He sees talent and he's super smart. Yeah. Like he's one of Garrett's like, in my opinion, the best at doing social media like I've yeah. seen. Like he's taught me a ton and it's it's cool. Cool. Yeah, he's really good at it. So why did he come to your campus? So yeah, I at the time he I mean he loved to go to West Palm. I think he just uh yeah, there was like a I don't know exactly why he would always come to PBA. I mean he wanted to film um in west palm but yeah so one of our teammates um one of my teammates at pba actually like messaged garrett and was garrett posted a story and he was like i'm coming to west palm and then that's where i met him for the first time and he was filming out there and um yeah we just kind of like kind of hit it off and he brought me on a video and it did well and just like escalated very quickly and then i started doing tiktok at the end like instructional stuff a little bit and it was cool how that was doing it wasn't crazy nothing crazy but yeah it was it was just awesome i started to really like social media and garrett asked me to come out so to texas and that was like where it kind of all just escalated from there into youtube and at that point that was like i, I don't know on the timeline like is that before good good yeah i was like right when good good was in its beginning i mean i think they had two hundred thousand. i don't even right i don't remember but it was just a handful of you yeah, there was, well, I think Kyle was like, Kyle was a part of Good Good at the time. Berkshire. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. So, early days. Yeah, early days. It the was, the was Good Good door opens and closes quickly. Yeah, I mean, there's been there's been a couple that have, yeah. for sure. I know, I, Garrett and I never actually met, but I was, randomly, I was in Florida maybe four years ago, and we were, like, in the same place at the same time, and he was messaging me, and we were going to meet up, and um, we never, we never did. I think something was scheduling or something like that, yeah. but... Um, it's been interesting to watch it from where I'm sitting and see like this incredible thing that's obviously really important yeah. to a lot of uh, young golfers, new golfers, good golfers, old golfers. Golf in general, I think it sort of has a, 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 a sort of a, a new way of looking at the way we play, whether it's like the massive matches or things like that. It's really, it's been interesting to watch. Yeah. I mean, Garrett's just like, like I said, he's just so talented with seeing people but then everyone else in good good so talented as well yeah i mean the whole squad is awesome and 
um, they really they really do bring in their own audience, each person. Yeah. Which is really cool. So it like all worked really well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, everyone's super talented and can talk to the camera really well. And yeah. Entertain. That's like stuff you just gotta like you gotta look for. What's the name of Garrett's like close friend? What was the with the one with the mustache who does the impersonations? Or the, the, the Oh beard? Matt? Matt, Matt Sharp. Yeah, yeah. I love that guy. Oh, yeah. he's. Uh, I love that guy. He reminds me a lot of a younger Dave Fink, actually. Yeah, yeah, he's just so funny. And, like, I love how he's always got his shirt off. And, like, you know, he's just, like, running around. And, yeah. like, I remember when he got engaged, I was like, oh, great job, man. Like, we haven't even met. You know what right, I mean? Right. But, like, I think, you know, being in the golf content space mm-hmm. is, like, there's a, there is a shared similarity there of, like, you know, we've gone through the same things, right? Like, even yesterday when we filmed together, you were like, man, like, how do you get all these carts? You know, or like, right, right. Or like, wow, you do this like differently than I'm used to. Right. Um, yeah, it's crazy because it's like, and we're on the edge. Like, everyone in this this golf influencer era and YouTube golf era is like on the edge of pushing the, like the needle into this new, you know, the the way golf companies look at us. It's it's kind of it's kind of interesting because I mean, before before like we all did this like youtube golf stuff it, it was never like thought of no one cared so, like, no, one cared. no one cared well in fact when i got started with adventures of golf i remember like there wasn't a comp yeah there was there was nothing else out there and thanks to the pga tour for like inviting me into this thing that i didn't want to do right. um but it did turn into something that's like wow it's like it's it's certainly valid yeah I want to touch on something we talked about. Did you have something you want to jump into that? or no, I, no. I wanted to touch on something. You weren't present to this conversation, Jojo, but yesterday Grant and I were in the cart and, um, you know, Liv came up and we're talking about Liv and like, you know, we, I've obviously uh, intentionally decided to not really get involved in the Liv conversation because for me, um, you know, my top line on it is like, hey, I don't even watch that much PGA Tour golf. Right. So ultimately, do I have an opinion on Liv? Uh, my only feeling about it is that a lot of the players who went there I know are good people right. and I like them and they've been kind to me when they didn't have to be. So like I, whatever the powers that be, like, I don't know about that. I do know that um, people that I respect have chosen to do it. And so, you know, I just kind of stay out of that conversation because uh, I just don't really have an opinion on it. I'm more curious than anything else, but from a content perspective, you know, we were talking about live and how like, you know, millions of people watch a two V two match. Right. on youtube but no one's going to watch this like formatted thing and i was like wait why don't why didn't they just take live and treat it like the match with like bryson and brooks or like why didn't they just package it up into like a editable format where it's like yo here's an hour video of the best people in the world playing golf Dude, you're sharing too many secrets sorry <laughs> you <laughs> you be careful there. yeah jay jay i know you're listening right now uh jay monahan if you want to just turn down the volume well and that's even what's interesting too is grant we talked a little bit about the tour and how like it's there you know like i've been lucky right like they've basically like snow plowed me into their world but even within that it's like it's like impossible to get a media credential and like it's like well aren't i not <laughs> right what is what constitutes media right am i the austin am i the austin business journal right right Do, that, would that 1200 people read or am i a youtube channel that 12 million people follow right or like which what, what, where does the line get drawn? And I think that's kind of one of the interesting things. I mean, even going to your um, TaylorMade deal, mm-hmm. right, which is really interesting. Like we've seen in this year alone, we've seen ostensibly, I've heard through the grapevine, more money going to content creators with club deals than to LPGA players, mm-hmm. right? I mean, yeah. I don't yeah. know if you want to share what your TaylorMade deal is. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a 360 uh, deal, right? It's like, yeah. it's like all the clubs – Oh right. yeah, it's it's an all. Awesome. They're very they treat us great, and um, they have been. You know, it's it's a great deal. Yeah, so. Barbudi texted me this morning. Did he? Yeah, he saw the he saw the clip of us walking down the fairway, and he oh, was cool. like, "I love that guy." Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, they've. I mean, Michael and the whole team at Taylor made us. They've really made the experience really cool. I want to ask you something. So you know, like, what's really interesting is 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 you take what you love. Mm-hmm. And you take and you hear the phrase "Do what you love, never work a day in your life." Right. Is that true, or like where are you at? Like because once you take what you love and turn it into a job, and and it becomes a requirement to produce like a salary, essentially. Like, what what are the are there pain points for you that people probably don't even think about? And and please be honest; it's not complaining, right? Um, yeah, I mean, 
So first off, I just, I love golf. So I feel like that, I feel like someone can't fake that they love golf. Like you either love it or you most of the time don't. Like it's just like one of those sports where it's like um, you either have a passion for it or it's just something you do on the side. Um, and I, I really do have like a, a passion for the game of golf and teaching and learning, you know, about the swing and just everything that goes along with golf. I'm very intrigued by it. So I love to share that um, on camera, which that comes out e pretty easy. It comes out very naturally, especially teaching videos. Those are like, those feel the most natural to me, like when I'm teaching. And I love doing like 18 hole videos where I'm just vlogging and talking. But um, yeah, what was the question again? <laughs> I forgot where we went. The question was, what are the unknown pain points of oh, like, yeah. working in golf that mm -hmm. that that when 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 people watch you, they're like dream life, right? yeah, and and certainly it is. So yeah, I mean, I feel like that goes back to what we were talking about. Me and JoJo was like, it comes down. There's a lot behind the scenes that people don't know about um, with the editing, with the thumbnails, with the titles, with you know, keeping people engaged. There's there's a lot that goes into the thought behind it, and like now. I don't really post a video unless I already thought of like what it's going to look like from a title and thumbnail perspective. Right. So everything's like, you know, I do really think through what content I'm posting and I'm very selective now when I feel like when I first started or even eight months ago, six, eight months ago, I would just go out and film and be like, you know, here's a bit. Like it wasn't, there wasn't like a passion. Now I feel like, you know, stepping out on my own, there's like, a tr there's like a passion to like really think through each video and make sure it's structured right. Um, and, you know, bringing on Skylar, my videographer, he's like, he's super talented. And we like, we just talk all the time about YouTube and that's, that's fun. Like we could stay up late just talking about thumbnails. And right. Thumbnails. Like, I love yeah, it. I will say, you know, your, your first answer, right. is like, I love golf. Mm -hmm. You know, like my, my personal journey with golf has gone through a few different, you know, parts of the roller coaster. And, um, you know, I, I definitely, there was a point in my life when I maybe loved golf more than I do now. Mm -hmm. Um, it was still an exploration. I was still tweaking on the swing. I was still like really trying to figure out the game and the swing. Um, and you know, there are certain parts now where it's like, for me, golf typically happens as soon as I get off a plane. Right. right, which is obviously kind of challenging, right? Right, right. And um, you know, it it has its own like jet lag or whatever, and then you've got a production requirement of like I have to get this done or whatever. But what's really interesting is my takeaway from playing golf with you yesterday is like your like love for golf like spilled over onto me, and like I like really really enjoyed playing yesterday. That's all, and, and I mean, you were playing amazing, which is just like it so cool for me to see. It helped, even though there are bad shots here and there. Like I could have played so much better still, but like it was just. I think one of the things that you know, you, you, hearing you talk about like the the swing and the and the coaching aspect of golf, it's like part of loving golf is seeing improvement, right? Right. Oh, one hundred percent. And um, if you're not improving, I feel like that's where you get discouraged. Yeah. And but golf is it's up and down. That's what it is. It's like some of the biggest improvements I've made have been in like the worst times, like with my golf swing, Interesting. with my game. Like you really, when you hit rock bottom, you start to like really figure out your golf game. And that, that happened a lot when I was playing competitive golf, college golf, you know, when you're going through, you, you just, whether it's mental, it can all be mental. Like there can be just a fear of going right. Like you're, you have that one shot where you've blocked it a couple of times and you're standing up on a tee and you're in a tournament and you're like, man, I hit that a couple of times in a practice round. And like, it's, it's in, that's that fear in your head. But, um, yeah, I just, the improvement of golf is it's never ending. That's, that's the biggest thing. You talked yesterday about uh, on the first hole, there was like this infinity green and you talked about Fogel's. I was like, what the fuck is a Fogel? <laughs> yeah. That's the, the fear of going long. Yeah. So, so is there also Fogers <laughs> fear of going right? Uh, yeah. That, that's the new one. Yeah. Uh, but Micah, Micah has like this Fogel, he was, he explains it. That's his, that's his phrase. Uh, <laughs> but I mean, like my, it's also, he also hits his driver three, 350 and then he gets over an iron and then he has that like fear of going long. And it could have been because of a lot of reasons. Yeah. Um, it could have been because he was playing irons that maybe were like really hot and they were, he was catching flyers and they were flying the green. And then he's like, holy crap, it's the iron. It's yeah. me. But, um, is he playing seven nineties? Those are dangerous. No, long clubs. he was not. He was, that was I think, I think when he was with, Cobra, he okay. had they the first set he got before he got his blades, he had a thicker set. 
Right. And I think they were flying pretty far. Yeah. Like the last thing he needs is like distance. No, he needs like control. He needs control. I think he does. Like blades are good for him because his swing speed is so high. Yeah. Um, you got anything, Jojo? I feel like you want to jump in. Always, but uh, I think we should probably take a quick break. Okay, we're going to go to a quick ad break, and folks. When we come back, uh, we're probably going to get into some some deeper stuff. Oh, yeah? No, the last thing I want to talk about while I'm thinking of it is when you talk about like your golf game and improving. Yeah. I've noticed just from like coming out here just for like a day and, and seeing this whole, your whole production, which I, this was like really interesting to me, just how you guys film stuff. But you're like, you're like a business guy. Like yeah. you're overseeing like, it's a huge thing here. Like, it's not just, you don't go out and just film like me. It's very different. Like you're in a different place and I can see where golf could maybe take a back seat. Yeah. It could just be like, you know. Yeah. For me, for me, like to be, to be like more direct, like for me going to play golf actually feels like selfish for me. Right. But because like me playing golf isn't pushing my business forward in the way that I need it to. Right. Um, but that said, like I still, like I really, really enjoyed playing yesterday and that just felt like so kind of like, um, you know, when I, when I walked into the day, I was like, Oh God, what am I going to miss? Right. Like what's what's going to happen on my phone. Sometimes I'm afraid to open up my phone oh, yeah. around, you oh, know, yeah. the worst thing you want to do is open up your phone and get like some news where it's like a oh, problem. Oh my gosh. All this. Yeah. Like the best thing ever is sticking your phone in your golf bag yeah. and not looking at it for three hours. And you're actually like, wow. Like I just was living in the moment. Yeah. Like yeah. <laughs> I wasn't looking at my phone and you check in. It's like, Three text messages. Oh, God, we need your help. Like all this stuff. Yeah. I'm like, huh. it just ruins it. But. Yeah, this is all kind of evolved. Um, it's an it's an interesting journey. The other side of it is we were leaving dinner last night, and I asked Grant. I said, "Hey, on a week, how often are you sending an email?" Yeah, yeah. And he said, "Oh, I don't do that. Don't, no email. I, don't do that. I got I got a really cool guys that uh, that help manage. The, yeah, the, the business of it, yeah, the deals, Josh and, and like that. Josh and Joe, they're." Yeah. They're really cool. How many different partners? Well, you know, do we go to an ad break or no? Let's take a quick We're going to go to an ad break. We'll come break. back. We're going to get into the nitty gritty. All right, folks. Ad time. Beep, 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 beep. Ad time. Very excited to talk to you about languages. And what part of languages specifically, Jojo? The learning of them. Love learning. I'm a big learner. Big learner over here. Big learner energy. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what they call me in the discount thread. What? In, what? The, in the chat <laughs> forum. Uh, ultimately... What you want when you're learning is an app that can give you real-time language on the go. I have been using Babbel in my travels through Spanish-speaking countries such as, but not limited to, Mexico and Texas. And <laughs> <laughs> I love speaking Spanish. And I love getting better at Spanish, especially when I'm in a 30-minute cab ride going from, you know, San Jose del Cabo Airport to our Airbnb. I use Babbel on that trip. And the speech recognition technology actually helps you to improve your pronunciation and your accent. Uh, there are so many ways to learn with Babbel in addition to lessons. You can also access podcasts, games, videos, stories, and even live classes. And you know what? Big move here from Babbel to not use AI. Instead, they went with 100 language experts from around the world. I'm a fan. So right now, go get your purchase with a three-month subscription you're going to get an additional three months for free. That's six months for the price of three. Just go to babbel.com, B-A-B-B-E-L.com. That's B-A-B-B-E-L.com. And get some fucking languages in your dish. Yep. Just use our promo code E-A-L show. That's babbel.com with code E-A-L show. Guys, use the code. Don't, don't, you know, just use the code. Don't break the code. One of the cool things about the world we live in now is that you can publish your own videos, you can publish your own Instagrams, you can make your own content. And what else can you do? You can make your own store. And that's thanks to Shopify. At the end, I'm going to tell you to go to shopify.com slash EAL show, which you can also just do now. But what's really cool about Shopify is that, you know, one of my favorite things, I don't know if you know this, Jojo. I don't. I have no idea what you, you're going to say. You don't have an Apple Watch. I don't. I have the Shopify app on my Apple Watch. Wait, so when... You listening right now, buy something from the new spring collection that dropped yesterday. Someone, Eric's, just, bought a, someone just bought a towel. Eric's, Eric's hand twitches. Literally, I can. someone just bought a towel. The new spring collection on Shopify right now. I can tell you that today we had 1,700 people already have been to the site. Our conversion rate, I can tell you the online sessions, I can tell you what's going on for the month to date. So what you're saying is it takes things that have traditionally been hidden behind closed doors and makes them more accessible to the entire world of creators and designers and lovers of apparel, fashion, 
and everything under the sun. Well, it could be anything. I mean, even my dad. Maybe I should get my fucking dad on Shopify because he loves woodworking. He makes these great little pens. I love that. We should we should do a collaboration with your dad. We're going to. I have a painting of his that we're going to put on a hoodie. It's awesome. Yeah. And so ultimately, Shopify, what's really cool about Shopify is it makes it easy for people to get creative and to bring an audience into uh, you know the sharing of that product ultimately. Obviously, they have 24-7 help. And they have an extensive business course library, which you can use if you want to get smarter, which we all do. I hope you do. So sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash EAL show. That's all lowercase shopify.com slash EAL show. And you know what you're going to do? You're going to take your business to the next level today. Shopify.com slash EAL show. Thank you for listening. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager. For your life. I'm sorry, I mean your small business. Because sometimes people you hire can kill you. I'm, has it happened, JoJo? I'm sure it's happened. Yeah, we did have one incident, but we're legally not allowed to talk <laughs> about it. Talk about a severance agreement. Anyway, you're going to want to be 100% certain that you have the access to the best qualified possible candidates available. And that's why you should take a deep breath and check out LinkedIn Jobs, baby. Because LinkedIn Jobs helps find the right people for your team faster and for free. That's the really coolest thing. You know, obviously, hey, if you want a job with Random Golf Club, go to LinkedIn. Well, no, you don't need to go to LinkedIn Jobs. You just go to LinkedIn. Yeah, you can just go to LinkedIn. And, and honestly, sometimes they'll recommend it you for it. We're looking for a VP of marketing right now. Get it in your dish. You could go to LinkedIn and, and apply. Market Listening yourself. right out there. Yeah, get over here. Market it. Market that resume and come over to Random Golf Club. But ultimately, LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates that you want to talk to faster So post your job for free at linkedin.com slash EAL show. That's linkedin.com slash EAL show to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Listen, it's why small businesses rate LinkedIn jobs number one in delivering quality beans. I mean, hires versus leading competitors. Thanks for sticking around for the ad break, everybody. Hope they were good. It was very nice of you. Very entertaining. We we put a lot of time and effort into it. Thanks for your patience. And even if you fast forwarded, you know, I can't blame you. (laughs) I can't blame you. Although... Jojo and I do put energy into making those things entertaining. We also put random discount codes to random golf stuff in the middle. They're they're coded in a cryptogram. But uh, if you listen back again, you might be able to if catch you, it. If you listen in reverse while also playing... Stairway um, to Heaven. I thought it was Kid Cuddy. Oh, then never mind. The code's not going to work this week. Yeah, you just... It's all... you. It's, it's a 19-step process that can <laughs> potentially get you $10 off on a Big Mac or, or, or whatever. <laughs> Um, so we were going to talk about, um, we were going to, I was, I was curious to know how many different brand deals do you have? Um, right now, brand deals. So, well, there's, there's, there's different types cause there's the one offs. Um, there's the ones where you do like one time and you're one like, offs, like just the integration call them one post stance. That's well, what you call well, them. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. One post stance. Yeah. One of those. Yeah. yeah. Um, or, or you have your, your longer, yeah. you know, your longer one. So yeah, tailor made, um, Primo apparel cool um goat lane shoes oh i don't know those that's what you're wearing yesterday yeah yeah, yeah. those are kind of a casual shoe i like it yeah and i've been able to do, like design my collection and do a couple drops actually we have a couple more coming cool um but yeah that's been really cool it's been a lot of like hands-on stuff and with primo too like selecting like you're in control like i'm dropping a collection coming up with oh primo, cool and it's all about like the ocean sick which is just, like dude. something that i'm super passionate about diving fishing we got boats on one scuba like, uh, free diving. Free di- Oh wow, you're so, an animal. Yeah, so we hold. Your lungs are just like the size of a Minnesota. Yeah, so I I did get into it a lot. Um, I actually took Micah the other day, um, and he like got addicted right away. How long can you stay under? I can stay under pretty long. Probably like it depends. Well, I I don't know timing wise because it's all relative. Because if you're moving, you're using more oxygen. Your yeah. muscles need oxygen. So, um, if you sit there and just put your head under the water and hold your breath. That's not a real, I don't feel like that's a real test. So, um, but I can dive in like depth. I can hit, I've hit 55, 60 feet. Whoa. Yeah. But that's like, I touch it and I'm, I'm going. So you're popping your ears when you get to the bottom. Oh, popping them the whole way down. That's, oh, but you don't need to worry about the bends because you're not taking any nitrogen. Exactly. Nitrogen, nitrogen nit, what's it called? Nitrogen. It's nitrogen. like, yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, the bends is obviously created by that. But when you're free diving, 
Um, you could just fire back. Oh up. my gosh. Like I hit the bottom in 60 feet. I look up and I'm like, wow, that's far. And I just like straight back up. Whoa. That's gotta be like exciting. Oh, that's it's a awesome. ride. But I've also had some, some wild experiences where I've been like, I've, I spearfish too. Jeez. So I've had a one experience where I was like chasing a fish and I like, I lost track of like going up for air and I was just like still chasing them. And I got, when I got up to the top, I was so dizzy. And like, that's when you get close to blacking out. Whoa. And that's where it gets super dangerous. And that's with a that's with a harpoon. That's with, with it was a pull spear. Pull spear. Yeah. So you like you pull back this band. Oh, okay. It's like a mechanical. Yeah. So yeah, it's funny because in the Bahamas you can't use when we go fishing or when we go spear fishing in the Bahamas, you can't use like the actual guns where you, there's spear guns that you just right. press a button and it just pew, pew. Uh, but I you actually have to use a pull spear. Dude, I feel like this is a really valuable apocalyptic skill. Cause here's the thing is I'm seeing this as like as soon as it hits, you're like swimming to the Bahamas. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. Could you swim to the Bahamas? No. What's the you have what's the, have you ever swam a mile? <sighs> I don't think so. You could do it. I those the arms problem. Dude. No, those the arms problem are is paddles, so dude. no, this is what happens. So when you get off Jupiter, yeah. there's the Gulf Stream and it runs at like two to three miles per hour. North. Yeah, straight, straight north. So um these kids actually went missing like a couple years ago. Probably like, I was probably like six, seven years ago now even more maybe. Um, and they went out and they, their boat in like a couple days, like four or five days was like way up in like Jacksonville or like, it was nuts. Whoa. Yeah. So did they, um, were they, did they die? Oh yeah. They never got found. Whoa. Yeah. They went off Jupiter and like, were never found. What were they doing? Uh, they went to go fishing, but I actually was fishing that day. Those kids went miss. We were fishing, me and my uncle were fishing that day. Those kids went missing and we came in way before them, but there was a storm. There was a bad storm out there, and okay. they headed right onto the storm. Oh, they just got caught. Yeah, oh, they just went right out into it. They were young kids. I mean, that was a whole – a lot of people know about it. Right. Um, That's a sad story, man. Oh, it's awful, and there's like a statue at the inlet of the parents oh, right. looking out. Yeah, it was a whole thing. Yeah. It was awful, but um, but yeah, that's it's crazy. Like when you say like swim to the Bahamas, if I tried to even – so it takes two hours on a boat, but roughly two and a half, two hours on a boat to get to West End from Jupiter. Right. Uh, but if you were to try and swim, there's zero chance. I mean, you'd just get caught and boom. <laughs> you're going north. Oh, you'd be done. There's no way to fight that. No way to fight hour. it. Because what speed can you swim at? Oh, I don't even. Four miles an hour? It depends. It. I mean, I would get exhausted so quick. I'm not like yeah. a swimmer. It'd, it'd be, be really hard to like going. aim. It'd be really hard to tell where you're going. Oh, sure. yeah. But especially in the open ocean, the yeah. fins, what the fins I use when I'm free diving down deep are what really they help. I mean, they're this long. So Whoa. one kick, it like flexes and it just propels you fast. Sick. Yeah. So it, this almost makes me wonder if you were to f film, basically what I'm trying to get at is what do you, what would be your perfect day? If, a, oh, if I gave you question. 24 I've hours, had a couple of them. I've had a couple. You, of them you've had a, you, you've had a couple of Groundhog days. I've had like, a couple. I would re repeat this one. Yeah, yeah. I've had a couple on real days that are ideally like just amazing. They're not the perfect day. I don't think there's such thing. But um, I think it was close to perfection. All right. Um, well, start in the morning. I yeah. Want, I want time codes. <laughs> yeah. Basically, I would say waking up. You know, early in the morning, getting getting on the boat around like seven a.m. Okay. Uh, go fishing all morning. Get off the boat at twelve. Take a quick nap, and then go play like medalist. <laughs> or any of the courses in Jupiter, which I've I've had those days have happened, and I played Old Palm the other day with uh, Cam Kucher was awesome. Okay, um, yeah, it was really. Crazy. Is he good? He's really solid. Yeah, yeah I have a match coming out with him. Does he? Uh, does he? Uh, does he have any like similarities to his father as far as gameplay? Does he have a single plane swing? What's he got? He does, and they actually. So Cam, he talks about it a little bit in this video that I have coming out. Um, he actually like him and his dad have like a secret kind of in oh. their golf swing that they don't that they don't really like talk about. Like what Mac, the, it's a one plane secret, but yeah. he was like, yeah, I'm not going to share it on camera. And like, he didn't share it. And like, I'm not going to share it, but like, there's but like you a feeling I, I do kind of know. Yeah. But there's like a feeling he talks about, which he's like tennis backhand. I can't say, come on. Can't say, but, uh, yeah, yeah, you don't want to do that. Grant, Grant will show up next week with a pole spear. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I'm dying. I've loved Kucher swing for so long. Yeah. It's a one plane swing. Just, Just I mean, there's a lot. I mean, you can look at it. How, how tall is Cam? Cam's tall. Yeah. Because you're what, 6'3", six, 6'4"? Six, yeah, he's just as tall as me, if not right. taller. He's yeah. huge. And he hits it far. He hits it farther than his dad. And does he take it back all the way? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah he's great. I mean, he's so solid. Naturally. You know, I, I um, your swing, did it evolve over the years? Because you have a oh, really nice swing. 100%. You have a really nice swing. You just kind of like, just kind of like, 
it seems like you're just slapping the ball. Yeah, no, my in swing a good was, way. But yeah, my swing was not good. Like when I first started, it was it was horrible. Like, Interesting. It was, it was awful. I did not understand. I'm, you were taking it back inside. Oh, just everything. It was horrible. Like I didn't know how to turn. My body wasn't working. I was flipping, stalling, like the worst golf swings growing up. Like I need to post more videos of the old ones and like the progression. Yeah, I want to see that. It has been crazy. It really has. But even now with my golf swing, I'm so far from where I want to be. And I had a lesson with Chris Como the other day. Okay. Which that's another video I have on deck, which I stored up a couple of really cool videos. He's a good videos. guy. He's awesome. He's a good guy. Chris is so nice. And he uh, he really, I mean, he helped me a lot. Yeah. The feeling I'm, I'm feeling right now. Which is what? Right shoulder? Um, so basically, it's hard to explain, but he was having me put my hands together like this. Okay. Um, but and on back, the, backhand to backhand. Yes. So basically on the downswing, I'm feeling this, these stay back, like my hands stay back in this stretch, this stretching motion. So this is like, I'm pulling in this direction while my hands are staying back. And then they come through after my body kind of opens up. Yeah. So you wanted to get my body more open. Uh, but yeah, and I wasn't like stretching my muscles at all. Like I was just, I get really like steep sometimes and just flippy and handsy. Yeah. Uh, but he was actually starting to like stretch and make me use my big muscles and like rotate. Yeah. And it just felt like when you did it right, it was like sequenced up so good. Yeah. And he's just a smart guy. I mean, he knows so much more about the golf swing than I do. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's funny how like the best golf lessons are not about club path or face angle, but are more about your core and your weight. Right. And it's so interesting because like, obviously there's a certain transition point when it's like, okay, beginner, right? We need to talk about some things. But then as you go progress in the golf swing, I find for me, the most powerful lessons like Dave Fink, Breaking Cabo just came out. Um, Dave Fink gave me this incredible lesson where it was just basically like when you get to, um, I think it's like what, P5, where the right. club is parallel to the ground on the downswing. Right. Basically, let completely let go of the hands and the arms and just focus on the, like the, the thighs. Right. And just push through with those and don't even worry about the club head. Right. And that's because, I mean, the golf swing – the, the the club reacts to the body exactly and and it, there's also a lot of other reactions but like i would say a lot of the the biggest factors with the way the club's going to move is your body yeah is the biggest one and then obviously your grip positions yeah um bring this back in the back too oh yeah perfect perfect um yeah. yeah i think the club like reacts to your body's movement yeah so and your grip position kind of that like uh when you're in the locker room just trying to f flip someone's ass with a towel right that's the the hand is the body in this analogy that was the analogy dave used with you <laughs> he showed me <laughs> i still have okay um <laughs> <laughs> um yeah so i think uh joji you alluded to what, what what is this deep what is this deepness that you want to get to i don't even know you if want to talk about thumbnails right and like well i definitely want to you know i want to get nerdy with youtube and you know i have all those questions I asked Grant before the interview. I was like, "What's, what's your least favorite question to be asked?" And it was. I'm not even sure yeah. I'm so interested in this. To be yeah. honest with you, but it cl clearly you're alluding to like, I guess if you're if you're if you're like coming at this from the outside, it's kind of like. I don't see too much golf content. Right. I don't. I don't like. It's just. It doesn't make its way into my feed. Mostly, I follow philosophers and comedians. That's right, pretty right. much. That's, that's what my. That's what I want to see when I open up my phone or news like New Yorker, or New York Times, or whatever. And, um, but there's a, the few things I've seen are sort of these dramatic moments that have taken place, honestly, in your life or in, in, um, Garrett's life where it's like, oh, well, there's some drama going on here. And like, yeah. I think I, I'm not even like, I guess I'm more curious to know is like, is there anything you want to say regarding that? Because like, I don't, you know, for the most part, this podcast is mostly about like yeah. kind of personal storytelling, moments of inspiration, moments of education, moments of entertainment rather than like you know what happened yeah this like right. youtube gossip or drama yeah, I don't we, really. we don't care about that what i am interested in is and eric talked to me about this for a long time he, he you like to tell me in big transitional moments in your life that's when you learn a lot, a lot about yourself that's when you change right that's exactly where i was gonna yeah. it's funny is like i for as you were talking i was like that's the question for grant is like what have you learned is yeah. that where you were going yeah yeah my, the, the big question here is like you know given a lot of recent change in your life, like regarding, you know, good, good and grant and sort of the whole world of golf content that you're still relatively new to. 
What have you learned throughout all the past changes? I've learned a lot about business. <laughs> yeah. I guess that's like, it's not all just, you know, about uh, just the content. And, uh, but yeah, I, from a, just a friendship and like all that, you know, like I've always said it on the podcast that's I've, that I've been on is like, I'm not mad at anyone. Like I'm not over here trying to get back at anyone. Like I'm very grateful for good, good. And for everyone, Garrett and all the guys that, you know, I, I would not, I, I don't believe I would have this platform at the level I have it right now without all of them and like the help. And we all helped each other, which was really cool. So, um, but yeah, it's, you know, I, I feel like that's what a lot of social media thrives off of is, is yeah. a little bit of drama. So, um, you know, there could be a time in the future when Garrett and I film again. And like, I feel like that's just, that's what people like are dying to see. Yeah. And it, it's pretty funny. Did you talk at all to Rick? Because apparently the, the comment that Rick gets is like, they want Rick and Pete. It was a little bit less formal, but like Rick and Pete used to be like always in videos together. And right, I, like a series together. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's, that's, yeah, I've, I've actually been able to talk with Rick a lot. And Rick's someone that, you know, he's super smart with yeah. YouTube as well. So I love to talk with people that are passionate about YouTube. Yeah. And I think I've learned a lot from Rick as well. And like our UK trip was awesome. Yeah. Um, I saw how he did everything. Uh, you know, it's cool. I just yeah. think it's really cool. Rick has a line where he'll say to his crew, like, he'll say, like, you know, um, they'll be, like, taking time to make it better. Mm -hmm. And then Rick will say, relax, don't worry. This isn't, this isn't, you know, random golf club. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny, though, because, like, there's different styles. Like, yeah. that's what I notice in this YouTube space, YouTube golf space specifically is, like, you guys are more structured and more thought out and planned out. There's a schedule feel like you know what i've been used to is more spontaneous like sure. just show up to the course like all right what are we filming today like let's let's think of an idea boom let it go yeah and just fly It'd yeah be so funny to take grant on an adventures and golf shoot oh, i would love that just drop him in bulgaria you know we could do um we could do there's a course in st thomas have you heard of it no mahogany run is that st thomas's only course and it's closed is that in the virgin islands yeah no yes st thomas yes in the Virgin. yeah 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 so you've yeah. traveled a ton to play golf. Yeah. You've played all over. Bingo. <laughs> that's amazing though. That's I feel very that's lucky. That's really cool. Yeah. Like, it, golf has been the magnet that's like brought me around the world for sure. Oh yeah. Golf, it's it's brought, yeah, it's exact exactly. It's like my whole life too. And it's like this game has opened up all these opportunities. And it's yeah. crazy because we all share that in common. It's yeah. golf. Well, how has that changed? What opportunities do you have now that you didn't have recently? Because I would imagine you have all this creative freedom to get to decide what your channel looks like for the next year. Right. Um, yeah, I mean, it is, it's cool because I would say the time and energy and focus is what is I'm able to like put more into it. And that's where I feel like quality comes, yeah. comes out and obviously improvements. And I'm always improving. Like I'm not where I want to be with my channel. I'm not there yet, but I'm going to get to a point where I'm like, really proud of each video that ever is released and I, I think i'm gonna get there soon yeah so i'm like i'm always pushing to get to that level where i'm like every video that comes out production is unreal the the concept's great i'm pulling together some amazing collabs and that's that's really fun to me thank you yeah, yeah i'm feel lucky to be there he wasn't, he wasn't talking about us no, i'm sure he wasn't <laughs> um i going back to what you said though, was like learning about business is interesting because like you know obviously um I relate. I think what's really interesting about business is like, um, you know, th there's like when you're basically creating your own stakes, you're creating your own product, mm. right? You're essentially creating a product, right? And right. your product is videos or who knows what's next or, you know. Yeah. Uh, and I'm going to go into like the teaching space for sure. Cool. That's where I want to. I can't wait to see it. Yeah. Um, but like you, you sort of like have this opportunity. My favorite quote is... Um, uh, by you know Andy Warhol. Mm -mm. So Andy Warhol was a um, he was a, an artist who he created a thing in New York called the Factory, and in the Factory it was a bunch of people making art with his name on it. Right, and so it really was like a, a factory where it was like they would do a lot of screen printing artworks of like you know it'd be like a famous picture you probably would recognize his art, but it's like <clears throat> you know he would have like 
a portrait of an artist or of a celebrity and then it would be like affected. Right. And it was like in the 60s. And he had a quote that said, good business is the best art. Right. And I think, you know, what I take that to mean is like, how do you create like an experience for whoever you're transacting with, right? Whoever, wherever the money's being exchanged, how do both people feel good about that? And I mean, um, your whole team, just like being able to meet your entire team, like you've done a great job hiring people that are all passionate and work well together. And that's like a skill because like you see that in your team and like every person out there is just like, I go through all the lists, but they're, they're awesome. They're so friendly and they, you guys have made the, the whole experience of us like coming out here to, to film just for one day. I mean, this is just a quick little trip. Yeah. Um, but it's been, it's been very enjoyable. That's good. I, I, that makes me really happy because I think, you know, one of the things is like whenever, like when, when, when we finish a shoot, Jojo's really responsible for the location. And like the goal is that we leave and they're like, please come back. Right. Rather than saying, ugh. Oh yeah, I'm never doing those that. guys. They brought a dog and a girl in a bathing suit onto the course. They don't, well, they don't know about that part. They don't yet. know that yet. And the, you know, the Dell sign actually is missing its e now because Grant hit a stinger off tied. of it. I I tried. I was trying to hit this one shot last night and trying to skip it off that little triangle on the one hole, and I could not get it to skip. Like I was so frustrated. I went through every ball in my bag, and I'm just like, "Are you kidding me?" And by the way, the context for this is we're on a tour course. That's when it's not, when the tour doesn't own it, it's one of the most exclusive in Texas. Oh, yeah. yeah. And it's sunset, and we're the only people on the entire property um, because, you know, they were kind enough to just be like, hey, bring the carts back when you're done. Yeah. yeah oh, I don't know. JoJo is always pulling off some stuff. He got the giant cart out there with like. Oh, we had no governors on it. Oh, we, yeah. We were speeding. That's fun. That's <laughs> almost dangerous. You're good at, you're good at talking. Um, Keffer and Grant had a lesson. You weren't there for this. Yeah, so uh, this was this was a really interesting thing, right? So you met Kaffer, mm-hmm. um, who obviously has had a hole in one in the simulator, mm-hmm. but he has never had a lesson, right? So how did that go? Giving you you gave Kaffer a lesson. It'll be on YouTube soon. Right. How did that go? And you can spoil it because yeah, just just talk to us about the experience because you were so funny throughout it. He kept turning to me and he kept being like, "What? What are we doing?" Here? Yeah, I was well. It was kind of interesting because I'm like I'm thinking. You know, he's never had a lesson. I don't think he's going to have this crazy golf swing, this crazy move. Um, it's not going to be functional. And I'm like, we're going to have to change some stuff, give him some improvement, like something to work on. Um, and basically, he hits like the first five shots and hits them perfect. They're high draws right on his target line, dropping it to the inside. Now, looking back at his golf swing, there's a few things that we could have really got into um, that would have taken a long time and like feels. But um <laughs> He just had such a natural, solid move. And he was like, one thing I look for in a golf swing, I love when someone's hitting the inside of the ball. Um, I'm very biased on that. I just feel like, and you hit the inside of the ball. You're always, other than a wedge, with like your driver, you draw your driver. And I love that because people that are really struggling and swiping across the ball, they're always coming up short. Yeah, Um, Divots are usually a little steeper. It's just just usually this whole thing. So I look for... I really do. I'm very biased in that. And I like when someone's hitting the inside of the ball and hitting a, a slight draw. Um, but you can still fade from the inside. I don't want to make anyone think that you can't hit a fade from the inside. Power of the ball. fade. Yeah, exactly. Ooh. Power fade. You're still hitting the inside of the golf ball, Sex, which I love. Sexy shot. Exactly. Uh, that's the best, the power fade, because you're still hitting it with uh, with flush contact. You're not swiping, not hitting yeah. on a deflecting angle. So you're getting the distance out of it while hitting a fade. But he had such a solid move. And his dispersion and every shot he was hitting was just so money. And I'm like, what the heck do you want me to do here? And I loved it. I looked at it on my swing, or I looked at his swing on my phone. It was a solid move. I mean, there's a couple little things we could work on. We worked on, you know, opening his up weight his shift. Not his weight. Um, a little bit of his weight. His pivot was a little interesting because he doesn't. I think one of the things I noticed is that he doesn't really twist. Exactly. So looking back at that lesson, I'm like, he could coil a little more. Yeah. Because he kind of goes back and he sinks. Yeah. So his knees move towards the ball and it stops his body's turn. And so doesn't he? Doesn't he move off the ball at the top of the swing? A like, little bit. It's fine though. I okay. like I like a transition into the right side. But I love talking about swings. Yeah. Though. What 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 he did really well or what. The one thing he could have improved on just a little bit. He did a lot of things really well. Um, yeah, like like you said, his turn is coiled because when he goes back, his lower body would actually sink towards the ball and it would yeah. stop his turn. 
low, you decreasing his distance. Exactly. And you, and you can't turn back when your lower body's sinking. Yeah. Like you have to get this right hip to move back yeah. to get your full turn. So you want to see that right hip. Like you want to see left front knee kind of bending, back knee going straight. A little bit. Yeah. I don't. So I'm not a huge fan of the X factor, which is basically oh, when you keep that right knee bent and you're creating this this yeah. tension basically in your back and in your spine. It's like that X factor is what they call it. Do you like Dahlquist, Dana? I, I've watched, I've seen a little bit of this stuff on. Dana's all about straight right leg. Right. Kind of like pushing back into right. that hip. Exactly. And that's. And then he's got you cupped over here like you're, you know, right. like a shopping bag. Bowed, you mean? Yeah, bowed. Yeah, sorry. Um, yeah, whoa, whoa, close one. Yeah, I was like, whoa, whoa. Everyone God. on the podcast is about to start hitting yeah, these yeah. slices. <laughs> no, uh, yeah, I've seen, I've seen almost all the coaches on Instagram. Yeah, and there, are, there's a lot of really solid ones, and they all have their, you know, everyone has a little bit of a bias in one direction in the golf swing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like I, I don't, I'm not going to tell someone to always just straighten the right knee. Yeah. Um, but I do like to see that right hip push back. I think yeah. that's always going to be effective. Um, so that's one thing I think he could, he's only been playing golf for like two years. Yeah. And I'm like, there has to be something bigger than what we're looking at for him to be. I care more about his score than just changing his golf. So I don't want to sit there and just be like, you need to be doing this and this. Right. I wanted to go out to the course and see what the heck is going on. Okay. Oh, so you did a playing lesson. We did a one hole, just one hole. So I, I would love to see it over an 18 hole period. But what I saw, um, immediately hit his tee shot right down the middle, two tee shots right down the middle, high draws. And I'm like, Okay, this is not the issue. First thing I saw was a little bit of an alignment issue. Okay. Um, he was aiming a little right, a little bit closed off. On the box. Right. Yeah, and so we helped we helped him with basically lining up his body to his target. Because I was like, what are you aiming at? And he would line up, and his body was closed off to the target really bad. Um, so he was looking at the bunker on the right, but he ended up hitting a bit of a pull draw. Exactly. It was It was almost – it's not a pull draw because he actually starts out to the right. It's just too much draw. Okay. So like what, what he w- thirty yard draw? Yeah, 20, okay. 30 yard draw. Yeah. So what he was doing to achieve that draw was basically keeping his body closed and letting his, his hands flip. Ah. So he would it would square the face up. And I see. So if you think if you think if he like um, got his body through impact, it might straighten out the shot shape. Exactly. So right. I was in his mind. I was like, we need to open up the body and feel open, so we're clearing and holding the face instead of stopping the body's rotation when the arms pass. Right. Um. So when we got up, we he played the hole. Uh, his wedge on the green, solid shot. I mean, took a dollar bill divot, shallow. I'm like, what the heck? What are we supposed to do here? It's beautiful. Um, and then he gets up on the green, and I, I could see the putting could could use some work. And that's yeah. where, when you're a new golfer, it's like you don't always. You, I mean, if you go to a golf course, look at the range versus the putting green. Boom. I mean, there's <laughs> like yeah. maybe one guy on the putting green that everyone's whacking drivers, and I'm I'm guilty of it too. Like I'm yeah. I'm talking to myself. Yeah. But um. But yeah, so it's. I didn't, putting I didn't practice sure. putting yesterday. Yeah, no one does. Yeah, yeah, it's funny. the um, The swing is way sexier. Oh yeah, and it's but like, when you make a putt, yeah, but it feels so good. A yeah. long putt. Yeah, but that's yeah, that's my thing though. I mean, would you rather? I'm curious about this. Would you rather hit the ball great and miss every putt, or would you rather hit the ball horrible and drain every putt? I mean, I'm currently living in the latter, right? Where I where I'm. Currently, right, I'm I'm putting much better than I'm stroking, right? Uh, than I'm than I'm like you know swinging, right? Um, and I mean ultimately, like I think you know I, th- I I maybe what I should do is do an experiment where it's like I'm not going to practice the swing at all, and every round I'm just going to do short chips, yes. and putting, yeah. because ultimately it's that it's that game of like you can be really confident on the tee box if you know you can get up and down from anywhere, true, and if that becomes and and basically the the tee shot and the fairway shot are just kind of like that's just like opening the envelope oh 100 when you read that shit that's like that's the scoring moment oh and like a lot of the a lot of the commentators and announcers always say um the money's made from 100 yards and in yeah. 50 yards and in and that's where you should start learning golf is from 50 yards and yeah. in. I, I agree um but yeah back to that question i just think someone like adam scott for example who's considered to not be the greatest putter which he's still a great putter. Like great he's putter. still an awesome putter. I mean, he won the Masters. Like he made a putt at the Masters, putter. dude. Yeah, like he's a great putter. What was that putt? Like twelve feet? I don't even know. Oh man, yeah. uh, it's just. What's it's your What's your bucket list course? Like, what are you like? I have to play this before I die. <sighs> man, I I love the courses. For some reason, I love all the courses in Jupiter. Like, I want to get out to like all of like Grove Twenty Three. Yeah, I want to get out to MacArthur. I want to get out to Medalist Seminole. 
Yeah. Um, and I got invited to play medalist. Nice. Um, yeah. So I, I, I just couldn't make it. So, uh, but yeah. Um, but it's interesting, like with the Adam Scott thing, I wonder if he's, you know, it's gotta be frustrating hitting the ball as good as him. Dude. And then not being able to golf swing. Like anybody that has, you know, there's those I mean, guys. Rory. That, yeah. Anyone that's just Rory. amazing. That, what is going on? Right. It's hard to watch. Yeah. Sorry, Roy. Rory's putting stroke. You just coming for him? Well, it's just like, I mean, the guy can murder the ball. He's like, hi, what is he? Um, uh, hyper flexible or Hyper something? flexible. Yeah, hyper mobile. Mm -hmm. Like, the guy's like an athlete. And then you just get to like in front of like a nine footer for Eagle and you're like, what? Yeah. How's that? He's, I mean, I feel like he's gotten, he's been doing pretty good recently. I think he's been playing pretty solid. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he's, Roy's so just a lab putter. Yeah. Roy's an insane. Tennis. Well, that's, I mean, just go, yeah, anyway, whatever. Right, right. Rory's on the same team as Grant now. Yeah. Well, Taylor that, made athletes. Like? Hopefully we see him. Hopefully we'll. Well, that's that's the question for access, right? I mean, are you, is that something that could happen this year? For sure. Um, I think any of the Taylor made guys are not off the table. And I don't know. I mean, yeah, that's going to be amazing. You never know what's going to happen. And, and I think just because you're with a club company, I think the better route to go is to form a relationship with them before you shove a camera in their face. Um, and that's been really cool because I feel like I've met a lot of really cool uh, PGA Tour players and yeah. tour players in general. So Yeah. They're probably stoked to hang with you because you're like, you can hang with them. Yeah. And it's, you could probably give them a run for their money. Yeah. Seriously. I mean, yeah. like, I don't know. You go to Sawgrass the day after the players, like, what are you going to shoot? Right. Two under. It's pretty good. Do mm -hmm. you think so? What do you, what do you think you'd shoot at Sawgrass so the day after I, the players? It's funny. That, that concept. I've wanted to do a lot. I've actually done it a couple of times where I'm like, what could I compete in a PGA Tour event? And I try and play the same tees. And obviously the conditions are not the same. The pressure is not the same. But I mean, I'm playing in front of cameras. like yeah. So it, there's a little bit of pressure. Um, but yeah, I, I like to see what I would finish on the leaderboard. And I want to do a video in the future. Is like, would I make a cut and a Whoa. major and like play on a major championship course and play two rounds and have a live leaderboard update? That'd be amazing. Where I'm, where I'm moving, where I'm shifting like a little graphic i'd love to see that we can make that happen yeah um well thank you so much for the trip down yeah thank you i appreciate it thanks jojo thanks grant thank you jojo killed it man <laughs>